Well, Jack, first of all, I want to thank you for stopping by and talking a little baseball here today. It's always great to catch up with guys when they come through town and uh, especially like getting perspective from guys who have played a long time in the game and now, you know, in a different role as an analyst on Fox. Uh, just curious on maybe your take on where we are with regards to the day pitching in the game today versus when we played, you know, in the 80s and 90s and, and, and how things have really changed as far as, um, you know, the, the home run, the strikeouts, yeah. all those things and, you know, really what your take is on it. Well, I think baseball is always evolving, and uh, we've seen that over the last couple of decades, how it's changed. Uh, you know, certainly here in Kansas City, I think they uh, learned with three dominant guys in the bullpen, uh, Herrera, uh, Davis, and Holland, that things can change. You can shorten the game. Obviously, pitch count is probably the biggest difference. Um, more concern about protecting guys' arms, and I don't think there's enough... Uh, of a sample size to determine really if it's worked because it seems like more and more guys are getting hurt now uh, relative to our generation but I've been always looking for Mr. Pitch Count. I, I'm looking for that guy to decide that 100 would be the limit. Do you know him? I don't know who no, he is. No, no, I'm with you. In fact, you know, it's, it's interesting you say that. I'm, you know, when I think of Jack Morris, I think of the guy, you know, especially during the, the era of the 80s, that whole decade, the guy that would take the hill, and you weren't looking for anybody to finish a game for you. You want to finish your games. And a lot of guys, uh, you know, back, uh, you know, kind of in that, you know, our contemporaries, that was that was a mindset. Yeah, and I learned it from guys that were in this staff. You know, Paul Splitorf was one of those guys. Jeffrey Leonard, for sure, was a guy that ate up innings every year. You know, he kind of motivated me as I watched from the visiting dugout. Hey, this guy's a bull. He's out there every day. He's durable. He's tough. You know, Dan Quisenberry uh, out of the bullpen was an everyday guy, but, uh, you know, it's just a, it's a conglomerate of guys that have pitched in this organization that, uh, you know, kind of led me to look around the league and say, I want to be like those guys. Well, there's a guy named Justin Verlander that kind of reminds me of the modern day you. I mean, I'm, I'm curious on your take on what Verlander's meant uh, to the staffs he's well, pitched on. The, the, obviously, he found new life in Houston. It was a good thing for him and probably baseball in general, you know. Picks up his third no-no the other day. That's that's always exciting to see. But I don't think you can really compare him to a generation because here's a guy that what has 20 complete games or 21 complete games in his lifetime. Yeah. You know that would have been a good year. Yeah. You know for Split or for or for Leonard. So uh, you know it's just a different time in baseball where you know he can go out and dominate and he is one of the guys that his manager and has happened in Detroit and now it's carrying over with AJ Hinch in Houston where he'll let him go 120 125 pitches you don't see a lot of guys getting that privilege anymore well obviously both the Tigers and the Royals now looking to kind of get back on that track to right. where they can be contenders and it sounds to me a lot like I know the Royals and, and from what you're saying the Tigers that you came up with maybe both these clubs are looking to to kind of be that team that uh, over a period of time they, they, they put a you know a nucleus of players together they're able to develop they're able to mature and grow in the game together and then win together uh, where do you see the Tigers now compared to where you guys were when you started well I think they're they're gonna have to do it you know Ultimately, the game is kind of a blessing and a curse, right? I mean, the bad teams are rewarded with the first-round draft choices, so they have to make the most of those draft choices, right. and they have to develop those draft choices into future stars of their organization. I think the Royals are doing a little bit different than the Tigers are. Uh, Kansas City seems to have core players, right. you know, the Mondeses, and, you know, even though Solaire didn't come with this organization, but the Whit Merrifields, those kind of guys have become stars at this level as players where Detroit's future is in probably starting with the generation in double-a right now and a group of core pitchers that are really doing well um, how long it takes them to develop how soon will they bring them up because they don't want to put them in a losing environment they want to put them in a winning environment so it could be a little bit longer process in my opinion for Detroit than it is for Kansas City I think you're closer to making that happen but there are two teams pretty much on the same course, yeah. timing-wise, to see if, you know, 
when will their next playoff run go? Yeah, and I think, I mean, looking at what the, at least the championship clubs of uh, here in Kansas City, and I know back in a little earlier than that with Detroit, it seemed like they had a lot of players that developed together. It seems to be a common theme for teams that eventually have to grow from within and, and develop their own players. But I think I agree with you on with regards to the pitching. We got a lot of pitching at the double-A level, too, that are, you know, they're a couple years away. But even once you get to the big leagues, you've got that learning curve. you got right. that year and a half to two to three years where you're not going to be the same pitcher that you were when you were pitching those big championship games. That's true. So you look at where there are, that's at least two years to get from double-A to the big leagues. And then three years, like, and I agree with you, that's about the learning curve for most players, especially pitchers. We're talking five years from now before yeah. you're going to get a group of guys that are playing well at double-A to play well in the big leagues. Well, that about does it for today, Jack. Thank you for dropping by and spending some time with us, and uh, best of luck along the way. Same to you, Jeff. Thanks.